Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the new Killer Instinct Jago figure, which I have to say, I'm pretty fond of the Killer Instinct character design, so I was really looking forward to this line of figures when they announced it, and then I realized that most of them have mostly no articulation. So that was a major buzzkill for me. You guys know I like some articulation, so... I didn't buy them, but somebody who sends me figures to review and then I have to send them back, he loans them to me. Thankfully, that's awesome. He did buy it, and he sent it to me to review it, so you guys get to see it, so you can decide if you want to buy the figure. And I have to tell you, uh, I don't think you're going to want to, but I don't know yet. So let's get him off the stand and take a closer look. Okay, so these figures come in at a $30 price point. That's right around where you're gonna, what you're going to pay for them, depending on where you buy them. It's going to be really close to 30 bucks. I don't think you can get them for less anywhere unless you go to like eBay and find some loose or something. So 30 bucks. So let's see if this figure is worth 30 bucks. He does come with a stand, but we're going to get rid of that for a second. And he does come with some accessories, but we're going to talk about those in a second. First, let's just talk about the height. Now, he is in a pose. You can't really change that pose, so that's not going to affect the height. He's going to stand about 6 inches tall, so he's roughly in the 7-inch scale, considering he's bent over, maybe even 8-inch. It's kind of hard to say. I didn't actually measure out all the limbs, uh, but he, he's definitely larger than your Marvel Legends or something like that, so it won't work in that, uh, but it is bigger, so for the price point so far, we're okay. Uh, now, you would expect for 30 bucks you would have some decent accessories, so let's look at those. We have a few, so that's kind of a good thing. The first one is this sword, which has spots of shading on it, which is really weird. The silver is nice, and the handle is painted nicely, but the spots of shading, unless that's accurate, I don't know, I haven't paid that close attention to the sword in the game, uh, it, it looks a little weird. And the plastic is super chintzy plastic, really, really soft, cheap plastic. The sword's not going to break, but you can literally bend it in half without any problem at all. So, not the best plastic. We also get this, which is a stick with spikes on it. Nicely sculpted, nicely enough painted, but again, not good plastic. So far, not impressed. We get this sword, which is less nicely painted. Sculpt is okay, all of those little nicks and grooves are sculpted in. Painted well enough, but not great. And again, chintzy plastic. So far... I am not impressed. We get this base, which looks okay. It has some paintwork on it. It looks really plasticky. It very, very much reminds me of a McDonald's toy from the 90s. Uh, this, this cloth right here, which is shiny, I, I'm assuming it should be cloth, and it's not supposed to be shiny, but it is. It just looks weird. And the fact that it's completely hollow also adds to the cheapness of it. So I have to say, again, not really impressed. It does have the peg holes for the feet, if you look at the feet spots, and if you look at the feet, you have to stretch them out. Well, I already did, so maybe it's not going to show up well. You can't really tell. But uh, fresh out of the package, well, there, you can kind of tell now. Once I peg in one of the feet, the other one's not going to reach the hole. So you really have to stretch the legs out to get them to fit. So that's kind of annoying. It, it's a static figure. It should be made to fit the base. But it doesn't really. So that's another thing. It's a bit of a bummer. Now here's one of the cool things. He's got these knee pads on here. You can see the knee pads. They are interchangeable. So you can pop these guys off and put on different ones. The plastic is still really lousy, but at least you do have the interchangeability. So that's kind of cool. If I can do it. It's a big peg. So you just pop that off and pop in a new one. So you get one set that looks like that. You already saw the gold ones that come on them. Then you have the silver ones. And then there's one other set. And I'll post photos at the end so you can see them all on. They don't really fit that well. It's just kind of, I mean, they're okay. I don't know. I feel like that money could have been way better spent on articulation or paint. So let's talk about the articulation and paint. If you'll notice, this guy is molded in, or at least his upper half is molded in like this skin tone plastic. But it's very orange. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's kind of blah. It's all right. Paintwork for the tattoo is really good. No paintwork on the skin at all. None. There's no shading, no nothing. It's just that molded plastic look. So that's a bit of a bummer. We have a nice shading in the pants. The rope's not painted very well down the leg, so that's a bummer. The feet are painted, I guess, well enough. It's not great. The white looks really shiny. It's okay. Paintwork for the sash thing is okay. Paintwork for the face, just okay. So really, we have a paint job that's 
not quite as good as like let's say the Mezco Mortal Kombat figure. So their paint jobs were definitely better than this. Similar, but I think slightly better. And they had, though limited, they had much more articulation. And they're significantly cheaper. The only thing this guy has going for it is the size. So let's go over the articulation. The head can swivel a little bit. You can go from there to there. I mean, technically you can go farther, but there's really no reason to because of the way it's angled. So can't really pose the head. The shoulder has a fixed hinge, so it can go up and down on the hinge, which, I mean, that's okay, but it's not... It's not the most, and you can rotate it around, which again, not really that practical given the sculpt of the arm. You can't move the hand at all. This shoulder, same type of shoulder articulation, which is going to be kind of helpful, I guess, but given the way that the hand faces the head, you can't really have him hold his weapon very well. So you can move the arm around like that, and you can rotate it, but still, look where the hand is facing. No matter how you rotate it, it's not going to be a practical pose. So you do get the wrist swivel there, but it's still not very useful, very problematic. No waist articulation, no leg articulation. That's it. This is a soft piece, so you can put his weapons in there if you want to. You can even split this if you really wanted to, but it's just, it's definitely not worth the money. That's my final verdict. It's a decent enough paint, paint job. The sculpt is good enough. I mean, it looks good, but with the lack of articulation and what is there is so not useful, and then the low quality of some of the other features, I'm going to tell you, don't buy it. I think these guys are going to drop in value significantly. And then if you want one, grab it on eBay or something. I see these guys sitting around for a long time and then becoming much cheaper. They're just maybe full gore with the better articulation, assuming it is, is better. But this guy really doesn't have much going for him at all. It's, it's, it, it's really only going to be good for those of you who really want a KI figure and this is your only option. That's it. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully that was helpful and you don't waste any money on these figures if you didn't, if you don't really want to. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.